Hey everyone, uh, I know some of you have probably been wondering what happened to PQA. Well, I figured I'd give you a quick update. Uh, and actually, that noise that you hear in the background um, is kind of mostly why I haven't updated PQA in a while. Uh, let me show you what I've been working on here. All right, this horrible racket is coming from mostly that radiator down there with uh, eight very, very loud Delta fans. That's actually a uh, Hardware Labs uh, GTX 480 radiator. But uh, yeah, this here is my CPU water block test setup. I've finally gotten it all together again, and I'm getting to a point where I can start doing CPU water block performance evaluation again. Um, it looks like a mess. Yes, I realize this. Alright, in this new version, this new kind of like final revision of the test setup, uh, under the table we have that computer, which is uh, acting as my data acquisition machine. It's hooked up to uh, this thermometer right here, uh, and it logs, uh, and hooked up to this thermometer, a couple T-type thermocouples, uh, and it's also hooked up to this manometer here, um, which again, data logging, for data logging purposes. Um, so I use this for measuring the uh, pressure drop of the water block, which the one that's on there right now is a uh, SwiftTech Apogee GTZ. Um, and this uh, thermometer here, as I mentioned, it's hooked up to one T-type thermocouple, which is here, which measures the um, inlet water temperature. Uh, and then there's a second thermocouple that you can't see here, but it's actually embedded in the processor's heat spreader um, as per Intel's thermal test vehicle specifications. So I actually had to take that to the machine shop that um, manufactured my DDC tops and actually had them uh, mill the IHS. Uh, so that's pretty cool and it works beautifully. Uh, so I don't have to deal with the absolute garbage uh, temperature sensors that are built into these processors. So for, I mean, really, for testing purposes, they're junk. Um, but the display right now is showing uh, what's going on on the data acquisition machine. Uh, this chart here uh, is showing the, draw, the uh, pressure drop of the uh, water block. So this is uh, the system off, this is when I kick the pump on, and then this is kind of where it's been sitting right now. Um, so that's showing about a 6.1 PSI drop uh, while running at... Uh, we're at about 2.6 gallons per minute running through the block right now. And then over here you can just see the, the data that's coming in from the uh, thermometer. Uh, and if I hit this button here in the KVM, we jump to the test system itself. Uh, so I'm using TAT for load because this is an old E6400, so TAT works and it puts out more heat than anything else I can run uh, with this processor. Um, and you can see right now it's running at about 3.5 gigahertz uh, at a load voltage of 1.544, uh, which is pretty high. Um, that yields about 109 watt thermal output uh, based on the tests that SwiftTech has run, because uh, they actually modeled the thermal output of the Conroe and Kensfield um, chips. Quite accurately, might I add. So I'm hoping to actually get that up to... Um, uh, up to around 126 watts or so, which would be breaking 4 gigahertz. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on here? Power supply for the system, hard drives over there, um, KVM is there. That power supply is a 24 volt mean well, which powers the Iwaki RD30, which is the pump I'm using. Um, that is basically my big uh, kind of ghetto built reservoir. Um, the board itself, I have a little bit of board cooling going on, just so I don't roast the board. Uh, so i got a fan here that cools the voltage regulation circuit, and I've done some experiments. It doesn't actually affect uh, my temperature data as logged through here at all. So I'm, I'm, I've also experimented with, with huge shifts in ambient. So I'm completely uh, independent of ambient here. I can raise the temperature in the room or drop the temperature, and it does not do anything to the data. Which is nice, or at least not anything I can detect. Um, this quarter inch cooling loop here, which is on the uh, north bridge and south bridge of this um, modified P5K, um, actually this has been, um, you can see there are potentiometers here and, and over here for uh, manually adjusting voltage to the north bridge, PLL, and, um, and memory. But anyway, this, uh, this cooling setup here runs down out and underneath here, where I have an old DDC hanging and then one of the uh, SwiftTech uh, MCR 120 reservoir units. 
Um, to make it easy to change blocks, I have little bleed lines attached this time, unlike my last setup. So I have this line which runs here to a valve here, and then another one there, which allows me to drain the water from either side here, so I can disconnect the CPU block without dumping water everywhere. Uh, and I have shutoffs here and back here, uh, so that it doesn't try to drain the entire reservoir and everything else with it, which would be bad. Um, for flow control, I have this half inch gate valve and then this half inch needle valve. The reason I have both of them hooked up is essentially it gives me a coarse and a fine adjustment. Um, because the pressure drop of this needle valve is very, very high, this has a very, very low pressure drop. So, like I said, I can make big changes with the gate valve, like this. Come on. Oh, actually, the angle is wrong for that. You can see it dropped quite a bit. And then I can make finer changes by using the needle valve here. Change hands. You can see that's dropping down lower and lower and then back up again. Uh, this flow meter, by the way, is ginormous. I know that. Um, but it's a relatively accurate flow meter. Actually, it's quite accurate. Um, has very good repeatability. Very easy to read. And a somewhat low pressure drop for as far as flow meters go. I picked that one up from Omega. Um, that was very expensive. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's what I've been working on. It's a mess, I know. Uh, I also have some cleanup to do because I've made a mess in my workroom in the process. There's, a, there's that radiator down there cooling everything. Um, but the reason I switched over to the mean well is so that I could uh, save the, um, the HP 6264B power supply for other experiments. Um, but yeah, I have quite a backlog of stuff to get through uh, on this new version of the test setup. As you can see, drawer of water blocks. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yay, messy workroom. Yay. Hopefully you found that quick little tour of the new test setup um, at least a little interesting. Uh, but yeah, I'll be using that to actually crank out results, which I will be publishing in various forums and on my blog for the first time. Uh, most of my testing, actually pretty much all of my testing that I've done previously uh, with this setup and its, its previous iterations um, was never released to the public. It was all stuff that I had put together uh, for other companies or just for, for my own investigative purposes. Uh, so yeah, I'll finally actually be releasing data this time uh, and hopefully you guys will be able to enjoy that as well.